In this demonstration, we'll see how to configure an electromechanical actuator for hardware in the loop testing. We have a model of an electromechanical actuation system. We are satisfied with the performance in simulation on our desktop computer. We now wish to configure this model for hardware in the loop testing. However, portions of our model are numerically stiff. We will need to configure the solvers to make the model real-time capable and convert it to C code so we can download it onto the hardware in the loop testing system. We will use Simscape Local Solvers and Simulink Coder to do this. Here are the steps we'll go through. First, we'll configure the model to use a fixed step, fixed cost solver appropriate for real time simulation. We will rerun the simulation on our desktop computer and verify we get the same results. We'll then convert the model to C code and download it to the real time system. We will rerun the model on the real time system, upload the results, and verify that they are the same. Then we'll perform our test. We will vary a parameter in the system, rerun the simulation, upload the results, and see that it had an effect. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is the model that we're working with. Three electromechanical actuators extend and contract to move an aileron. The aileron is modeled using Simscape Multibody, where we have a mechanical parts and joints imported from a CAD system. The electrical portion is modeled in Simscape Electrical. Here you can see the electrical network with the three lead screws, and if we go into one of these subsystems you can see the motor, the gear, the lead screw, and the abstract model of the driver circuitry. We will use a MATLAB script to walk us through the process of configuring this model for real-time simulation. Here you can see a 3D animation of the system. First, we will run the simulation to get a set of reference results using the variable step solver. The results are plotted on the Simulink scope, so you can see that the signal in yellow, the actual angle of the aileron, is tracking the reference signal quite well. And here you can see the animation as the aileron actuator extends and contracts. We'll add the reference results to a figure window. We'll use this to compare with the results with the fixed step solver. We'll now configure the model for fixed step simulation. We have enabled the local solver in the solver configuration block, and here we can see the results on the scope. The simulation is complete. We'll add these results to our plot, and we can see that the results compare very well. If we zoom in closely, we can see that the results from the fixed step, fixed cost simulation are nearly identical to our reference results. At this point, we are happy with the simulation. We believe it is real-time capable. We will set up the runtime parameter. The runtime parameter is going to be friction in the motor. If we open up this block, we can see that this parameter is configured to be a runtime parameter. That means we can change its value without regenerating the code. Now we will build and download the code to the target. Here you can see messages from the code generation process. And here you can see the real-time target where we will be downloading the code. The results from the simulation will be shown on this monitor which is connected to our real-time target. The model has now been downloaded onto the real-time machine. We will set this up to run in external mode connect to the target and run. The simulation is now running. We can see the results on the monitor. We can also see them updating on the scope as we're running in external mode. The simulation is now complete on the real-time target. We will upload the results and add them to our plot and we can see that we got the exact same results on the real-time target. We also had no overruns, so the model with the mechanical, electrical, and other components is real-time capable. Now we'll run our hardware in the loop test. We're going to modify a parameter in our system. We're going to increase the friction in the bearing as if the bearing is starting to fail. We will now rerun the simulation using the start command. You can see on the monitor that we are rerunning the simulation. And again, we didn't need to re-download the code. We just adjusted the parameter in the physical system right on the hardware. This simulation is now finished. We will upload the results, and we can see that the results from the second test, where we increased the friction in the bearing, 
are a little bit different, so we see that we are able to run tests in hardware in the loop configuration. In this demonstration, we have seen how to configure a model of an electrical actuator for hardware in the loop testing.